The handshake is extremely important, and we never reflect upon what impression do we make. So that feedback has to be amongst each other. And uh, not only that, eye contact is the second thing. If you want people to listen to you, look them in the eye. And if you have 20 people, don't look at one person. And normally, we always look at the person not giving nods and smiling, because we believe, okay, he believes me, he likes me. You know, and we're afraid of all the others who might be very interested, only they look like this. And most of us look like that when we listen, because we don't communicate, we're listening. So we don't use our body language. So I don't want you to overanalyze the people's body language while they listen. Only try to look at all the people around you. So just to give you a perspective on your body language while you listen, now I want you to relax your face and turn to your neighbor with the same expression. <laughs> now, most of you did this now. <laughs> Your face should be relaxed and just ask them, what do I look like? <laughs> you looked a little high like that. <laughs> the point is, never overanalyze the body language. Your only task is to look each and every one in the eye. If you have uh, 50 or 60 or 70 people, try to look at each table, one person at each table. If they think you are a boring engineer, well, that's a good thing to know. How do I prove them wrong? How do I play with that stereotype? Why do we have to create goodwill? Because there's a psychological effect called, don't forget this, halo effect. The halo effect means if we uh, give a bad impression, they will not listen to what we say. If we give a good impression, they will think, oh, he probably has something good to say also. So the first three minutes are crucial in order to make people to listen. A lot of people have the attitude, well, I only have this to say. I don't matter, I'm only the messenger. No, you're the messenger, it matters a lot. If you put forward the wrong messenger, it doesn't matter how good the message is, will go down. So create goodwill, Curiosity. How do we create curiosity? Well, the audience always have one question. What's in it for me? Why should I listen to what you have to say? So we have to make our message attractive to the people listening. So don't tell them what you want to tell them. Tell them what they want to hear of your message. Pick the goodies. <laughs> the messenger matters. So to put your looks in perspective, I had to do that. I wanted to know what people thought when they saw me, and I got three frequent answers. I'm, I'm half Swedish and half Brazilian, so every time I speak Swedish, people go, oh my God, your Swedish is so good, it's amazing. <laughs> and then, you know, I just wonder to myself, do, the, do I look like the person that would give away click sounds, like <laughs> Would that be more normal in Sweden, being half black? I don't know. So every time they tell me, uh, oh, you, your Swedish is so good, I always tell them, well, you know, I've only been here for three years. And that's a lie. I was born and brought up in Sweden, but when they hear my Swedish, they think I'm amazing. And I love that feeling. <laughs> Second thing is, they think about my age. In Sweden, we're very obsessed with age. So uh, I had a seminar to a Swedish television, and this famous uh, woman, she's in television all the time, not so friendly, she rose her hand and she said, Elaine, I don't really know why I should listen to you. You're so young. What could you possibly teach me? <laughs> and I don't know if you guys met these people who closed their eyes while they talked to you. It's quite interesting. Have you met them? <laughs> we, we'll talk about body language later. Anyway, I heard myself say, well, you're, you're, you're right. I'm not as old as you are. <laughs> and she looked really angry when I said that. 